we ran our first game of Daggerheart. So how did the players like it, and how did the game run as a GM? You want answers! I want the truth! Daggerheart has been in playtest for just about a week, and it seems like everyone is talking about this new role-playing game. If you hop on Reddit or Twitter or YouTube, you've probably seen dozens of breakdowns of the game and what it does and doesn't do well. However, a lot of this analysis are just impressions based on the read-through of a rulebook or by watching Critical Role do their playthrough last week. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but you can't really do a playtest without playing it. So, last Friday, I ran through my first game of Daggerheart with a group of my longtime players. We'll talk about what they like, what they didn't like, what systems they used, and what they didn't use, and how I felt about running the game as a veteran DM. But before we get started, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Wait, I'll wait a little bit more. Hopefully you're clicking on them. Let's dig into this thing. And here we go. First, let me tell you a little bit about my table. I sat down with three veteran tabletop RPG players who almost exclusively played fancy heartbreaker games like Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder. All three of the players got their start playing with me as their DM. Two came in playing Pathfinder 1st Edition and the other started playing D&D 5e. More importantly, the group had played for hundreds of hours together and had uh, a lot of D&D experience. Most of the D&D mechanics were second nature to them at this point, which is one of the reasons why we made the switch to Pathfinder 2e last year with mixed success. As for myself, I've run uh, about a thousand or so tabletop RPG sessions, although I will admit that Daggerheart was my first narrative forward game, which is a game kind of like Blades in the Dark or uh, anything that's powered by the apocalypse. I can run a D&D 5e game in my sleep, but I'm not used to running the more free-running style that Daggerheart offers. I didn't really think that this was uh, much put me at much of a disadvantage, but there was a little of apprehension on my end, just putting that out there. So, I had my players run through character creation beforehand using the Daggerheart Nexus and ran the playtest adventure provided by Darrington Press, which featured two combat encounters and three or so opportunities for roleplaying. Due to some time constraints, Tabletop Night unfortunately takes place during my kids' bedtimes, we skimmed over some of the roleplaying bits so that the players could get equal time with combat and roleplaying. Now, to stop drawing things out, I'll get right to the point. My players really love Daggerheart. In general, the players love the collaborative nature of the game and how it was built around tapping into their imagination instead of just the DM telling a story and them reacting and making choices. They really liked the impact that their decisions had on the world, not just within the context of the emerging storyline, but also the world building itself. One great example, one player described the forest that they were traveling in as having stone-like trees, which was then extrapolated into an actual actively petrifying forest in full, and that really gave that player some additional investment into the world. Now, it took my players about a full combat encounter to really get how the combat system worked, but they really enjoyed the flexibility offered by the lack of a hard initiative system and the choices they could make at just about any point in time during the combat. If a player took a lot of damage, for instance, they could trigger an ability to reduce that damage or simply burn through their armor slots. If they really wanted to make sure that a Forest Wraith took some damage, they could spend some hope to aid a nearby ally's attacks. There are a lot of small decisions in combat that make the game feel more real-time tactical and less wait for my turn to come around and hope that my strategy isn't moot by that point. However, those small decisions don't really get overwhelming, or at least it didn't overwhelm my players. Now, as I mentioned before, it took my players about a full combat session to get used to how the duality dice work, especially the with hope and with fear, and they didn't realize that they were supposed to be marking hope whenever they rolled with hope until I reminded them for like the second or third time. I mostly wrote this off as just learning the system, but I do think that GMs should remind players to bring two very different looking D12s to their session so they can remember which dice is the hope dice and which dice is the fear dice. Also, the players didn't really utilize the experience subsystem very much. I don't really think they got what it was for, and I only one player really saw an opportunity to use it within role-playing, although I will say that again, we kind of skimmed over a couple parts of the role-playing because I really wanted to see 
how the players liked the combat aspects to it. As a GM, one major issue I had was utilizing the action tracker properly. As written, players put counters on the action tracker whenever they take a turn and then the GM spends those counters to activate their enemies or use certain moves like group attacks. Now my players were able to string together multiple with hope combos in a row, so there were several times that I was left with 4 or 5 tokens and not enough enemies to spend them on. Now, like a dummy, I forgot that I could use some of those tokens to rebuild my fear stockpile, and in the second combat session, I had actually spent through all of my fear pretty quickly, uh, and that left combat dragging just a little bit. Had I remembered that I could have spent some of those activation tokens to rebuild my fear, it would have helped eliminate a, just a little bit of that combat dragging. I don't think that the combat dragging is really going to be a too big of an issue. Uh, it was mostly just me botching the combat just a little bit by spending too much fear. You blew it! Speaking of fear, this was another currency that I struggled with utilizing properly. To be blunt, I wasn't really used to the idea of GM moves outside of combat, and didn't really spend fear outside of the combat session. Basically how it went was we had our opening combat, I got a little fear on that, didn't really have much to spend it on, and so uh, I just kept stockpiling fear and stockpiling fear until the second combat session, and then I blew it all in the first like couple of, not really rounds of combat, but you know, uh, within a few activations. Now, outside of combat, I think that part of the reason I didn't use fear was because the playtest didn't have a good opportunity to do so. But, the rules as written makes fear seem like an element designed to make the PC's lives more difficult, which is something that the GM already has the ability to do without a meta currency. Maybe this just comes from my background as a mostly D&D DM, but I don't see why I would want to spend fear to impose disadvantage on a check or add a story complication when I can do that whenever I want. Like, I don't need permission from the game to go and do something to spice up the narrative. That's just my two cents. I guess some of this just comes from, again, my personal history with running games, but I will say that my history as a mostly D&D DM is going to be pretty similar to the potential Daggerheart customer base, which are going to be a lot of those 5e players that Critical Role is going to try to attract. Now, me personally, it's just going to take me a little bit of time to get used to that whole part of Daggerheart and the wider idea of GM moves outside of combat, and I think that maybe there should be some additional tools or guidance on how spending fear differs from the usual complications that a GM throws into a narrative or a story. All in all, Daggerheart was a hit at my table, to the point where the players wanted to keep the game going at our next session. So it helped that this was the first time that my players had tried this style of narrative forward game, but Daggerheart still shared enough familiarity to D&D and other games that they've played that they weren't intimidated by it at all. And they picked it up really quickly, like I would say they probably understood 90-95% of the game after about a two hour session. So now, I get to learn how to build out a Daggerheart campaign in the next two weeks. Wish me luck, and I'm sure you'll hear about that in a future video. Let us know in the comment sections if you've given Daggerheart a try, and let us know how you've enjoyed it so far.